Great, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Building Smarter Apps with the Predictive Vision Service. I'm Chris Chant and I'll be your host. Today we're joined by Michael Machado, a Senior Product Manager, and Emily Rose, Lead Developer Evangelist, both working here at Salesforce. They'll be speaking about how you can apply deep learning in your applications by training your own image classifiers using the Predictive Vision Service. Uh, before I begin, uh, you, some of you have probably seen the slide. Uh, this is our safe harbor slide. And I was waiting for it to load up. In summary, um, just a quick note that when considering future developments, whether by us or by with any other solution provider, you should always base your purchasing decisions on the products and features that are currently available. The key takeaway here is that we are a publicly traded company and we need you to make your buying decisions only on the products commercially available from Salesforce. Another quick reminder, if you'd like to follow along with everything, all the exciting stuff we have going on for Salesforce developers, please check out our social channels. You can find us on Twitter at, at Salesforce Devs. You can find us on Facebook as Salesforce Developers, as well as on LinkedIn and on YouTube. Last note, again, as I mentioned earlier, don't wait to ask your questions. Please feel free to ask those in the question slide at the GoToWebinar. Uh, please don't repeat questions. You know, we'll, we'll be fielding all of them as, as quickly as we can. Make sure to stick around for the live queue at the end. Emily and, and Michael will be fielding questions live. And if you have any questions that are not answered today, uh, please check out our developer forums. You can see them at developer.salesforce.com slash forums. And with that, we're ready to get started. Uh, we'll be starting our webinar, Building Apps with Predictive Services and the Predictive Vision Service. Uh, I would like to go ahead and introduce Michael Machado, who's going to kick us off. Michael, you ready to go? Yes, I am. Uh, thank you all for attending this webinar. Uh, as uh, Chris introduced myself, I'm Michael Machado, uh, Senior Product Manager with Einstein, formerly with the MetaMind team, which was an acquisition uh, that came uh, in the spring of last year. And I'm going to be outlining some of um, the recent advances we've done in deep learning, how we're exposing those to developers, and really introduce uh, a great way to get started with um, our first product out in the market, which is our predictive vision service. For those who might not have uh, heard during the um, Dreamforce uh, bonanza of media that got, gets put out, we really have been um, focusing on taking our both developer community and Salesforce customers through really a transition from where you came with us maybe a decade ago uh, using Salesforce as your system of record for CRM applications. As more devices and real-time applications came, uh, we were really able to deliver a new experience and allow you to engage with your customers in real time through social and mobile. And now we're in this, you know, system of, uh, from system of engagement to a system of intelligence where artificial intelligence leveraging all the new data inputs that are being created uh, are able to not only give you real-time assessments, but hopefully be able to provide you with predictions about um, how you can uh, alter your way your, you run your business um, in the future. And while you'll hear about a lot of new, new great features that are being embedded into the Salesforce uh, sales cloud, Salesforce service cloud, Salesforce marketing cloud, really one of the, the great parts is everything that we create is then eventually um, embedded into the Salesforce platform, whether it be force.com or Heroku, for you to build application extensions on top of that. So you can leverage not only our um, you know, sales lead analysis, but you can also um, have standalone applications that can be built leveraging um, many of our intelligent uh, algorithms that we're making uh, available to you in a low code uh, or even clicks manner. So. All these will be deeply embedded in the platform uh, with workflows and objects that all make your components smarter. Uh, and so now the CRM platform that is uh, the strongest CRM platform in the world is now the smartest CRM platform. Today I'm going to be talking specifically about our predictive services, uh, specifically actually around predictive vision, but we also have a predictive sentiment and natural language processing tools that will be coming out next year. Uh, but for now, we're really going to focus on what you can use today which is uh, a predictive vision service. You can actually get started today on metamind.io. Using force.com credentials, you can uh, authenticate and um, start going through our documentation. I'll walk you through all the steps for that process. Um, but um, more so, you know, if you're a Heroku developer, we're also going to be adding that uh, extension as well, so you can log in through, through Heroku as a uh, Heroku add-on. And many people ask me, you know, I'm... I'm coming from an industry that doesn't use images. 
or uh, my, you know, we have so much NLP data that sit, natural language processing data that sits in uh, CRM applications. Why image recognition? How is that important to me? And I like just to take a minute to, to outline, you know, I'll go through some specific use cases on how you can apply this, but really, no matter what industry you're in, there's new user-generated uh, images or business-generated images that your customers are, uh, that you're able to leverage to build new applications. So whether that be security camera, satellite imagery, IoT, um, television or internet ad spin, um, essentially cameras are proliferated everywhere. Uh, every user has a phone that they can actually make a, uh, take a picture from. So you can deliver really great user experiences uh, through either social media, through new uh, mobile applications, or even through um, leveraging some of your uh, new inputs coming from your own business generated images to deliver a great customer experience uh, leveraging image recognition. And, and why deep learning is important is we'll take a second to step back and, and really explain deep learning in a nutshell and, um, and show you why that you know, image recognition in particular has seen huge advancements in the accuracy. Uh, far passing um, human level uh, image recognition to through deep learning and deep learning you know from a 50,000 foot view uh, takes an input layer and leads to a series of hidden layers uh, can this one shows a diagram for three but you can have five ten multiple hidden layers and each hidden layer is composed of nodes that extract uh, more and more fine-tuned features and all those nodes um, leverage uh, information from the other nodes to to derive um, what is eventually an output layer, a prediction on what your image is. So, or in the particular instance of images, but the same technique of deep learning is being used for voice, it's being used for uh, textual data, it's being used for financial data, it's being used really across all of analytics. Um, so this is a great way to get started in, in, in trial of uh, you know, using deep learning in your applications through image recognition. And the example on the right shows, you know, uh, an image comes in, it first understands colors and pixels, and then you know, uses edge detection to derive object parts, and then eventually puts the object parts together to derive either, in this case, a face and use a facial recognition uh, algorithm. So that seemed very complex, and I'm sure people are, are shooting through the questions of, you know, well, how am I supposed to understand how this works? And that's really the beauty of the predictive vision service. Um, we take all the uh, confusion out of it and really have, have fine-tuned our models for object recognition so that you're able to just put your images that you want to train uh, into folders. And that's, you know, we, we have two really services that I'll, I'll step back and say, well, you can either use one of our pre-trained classifiers and leverage that for prediction. So we have a food classifier, we have a general object classifier, we're gonna have more classifiers coming out in the future. But really the power of the predictive vision service comes in your ability to train your own classifier. So you're able to take a specific business use case that you guys are struggling with or you want to uh, make uh, stronger through image recognition, bring your folders in, or bring your images into three folders, two folders, um, whatever, whatever your use case involves, train off the MetaMind platform, and then easily make predictions off of the, those models uh, on what the image is and how your business can leverage it. And then integrate that back into Salesforce. So I'm going to give three examples about how you can integrate that back into Salesforce. But really, this is a, a powerful tool that's going to open up new possibilities for your web applications. So, you know, we've only launched a service at Dreamforce, but MetaMind has been around for a few years. And uh, as we've um, worked with consumer applications, e-commerce companies, and now more and more focus on CRM, I'm going to bring three use cases up that have kind of led the pack since we've been uh, been acquired uh, for companies to start adopting our service. So one one is an e-commerce uh, company that leveraged our technology for metadata tagging. What they really uh, were trying to address is a problem they had an influx of images that were generated by their applications uh, because users were uploading images and not tagging them. Uh, so none of these images had metadata tags, so they were really left with you know whatever the user specified and they wanted to advance their, their web application. So their development team uh, researched the top subcategories that product images could fall into, and then began the process of gathering the data. And this is one of the most important parts of, um, of building any intelligent model, is gathering the data, understanding uh, the problem you're trying to solve, and making sure you have that kind of reciprocal process where you're able to uh, build a model, understand how your accuracy is, and then feed that back into your, um, your training data to improve on it. Um, 
so they started gathering image data from internal applications, from public, uh, publicly available sources, and sorting them into these uh, by class. Uh, each class uh, was represented into a folder, and they uploaded those to the MetaMine API. They were able to generate succinct and consistent metadata for all their product listings. Uh, images were the, of the products were sorted for their contents, and users were able to uh, enable new search mechanisms uh, for engaging with their, their e-commerce site. It, it delivered a better customer experience, increased their co customer conversion rates over time. Uh, another use case that's pretty interesting is, um, you know, really reigns true with, uh, with CRM is um, there, a company was leveraging our predictive vision service to automate the data input process for field service agents. So many times field service agents were working on products that were difficult to identify. This could be due to their size, their uh, accessibility of their location, uh, or even their shape. And agents are there for they're spending a lot of time um, finding what the product ID or the version they are working on and not having the right uh, parts to fix the problem. So they had really the problem of how are we going to generate these images? Our customer are we're currently not taking image uh, pictures of our of our, our field service agents aren't taking pictures uh, during their normal process. So they actually uh, are, are creating a new photo gathering uh, app where they take a picture of the, uh, already of every, every product they work on. And this is naturally creating training data for us. And as they gather more and more training data, they're actually going to then feed that into the predictive vision service to automate that input process. And because their field reps are, are now accustomed to taking pictures every time they work on a project, this is an easy to implement solution for them and that just automates the actual manual process of saying what product they're working on. Now service agents have been, are gonna be better equipped uh, with the parts they need to fix issues and less manual input processes. And then the final use case being implemented, uh, which I'll touch on very quickly is, um, you know, consumer sales, consumer products, uh, understanding what products are in stock, what products are out of stock, how sales reps can be, uh, you know, more efficient in their time of evaluating a sale. Uh, a lot of times uh, a field service rep might go into a store, have to look through all the uh, aisles, understand what products are out of stock, and now they can just do that by simply taking a picture. Um, they can evaluate the inventory, and now through clicks, the representative will identify what SKUs are in stock and what SKUs are out of stock. And they took a very similar implementation method as the field service reps did. Um, but there's a lot of use cases we can go into. Social media is a huge one. We've already got our social studio product integrating with this technology. But as you can imagine, uh, remote equipment monitoring, compliance and security, uh, whatever business you guys are lying in, uh, are working in right now, there's a way to implement predictive vision. So now I'm going to take a step back and actually show you how this all works, and then we're going to go into some coding examples. Bear with me for one minute. What you should see is the predictive vision service screen. And this is a UI for our API. It's, uh, it's not something you would actually uh, use as a developer, but it is a good way to see some of the API commands we have um, in action. So I've actually created a series of classifiers here. Some on cars, some on deciphering roof types, uh, understanding user uh, profiles, dishwasher types. This is a great like, kind of field service use case. And um, this is kind of my home. This is where all my, my classifiers lie. But what I'm going to do is create a live model for you guys and show you how easy this can be. So the example you'll do if you go to our doc site and you want to just use our preloaded uh, models is a mountains versus beaches. So I'll show you how to do that. Mountains versus beaches. So this is my model name. And I'm going to go through the process of um, one of the commands, which is uploading a data set. And I'm going to start with beaches. And I've actually done this through a dra drag and drop. So I can click here. And now I'm uploading all of my beach files. And the same thing I'm going to do for mountains. And these labels are what I'm expecting the model to output. So when, they, so when you're creating your data set, the labels you give um, each class are actually what you're going to eventually predict. So the thing, same thing for uh, mountains. Now I'm creating a binary uh, classifier. So if I give it a picture of a... Um, of an ocean or a desert, it's always going to predict beaches or mountains. It doesn't know what, I'm not, what I haven't trained it on, but, um, but this binary classifier is a great way just to kind of see the power of deep learning in, in action. Um, so right now I'm training this, and, and this will actually take a few minutes. If you had uh, 10,000 examples, it, would, it would, could take an hour or, hour or more than an hour, but it's, trading, it's creating that deep learning neural network that we talked about. 
and uh, in the spirit of time, I'm actually going to take, I'll show you that it is, it is moving, it is, it is training, we can actually jump back to this later on if you want to see it. But I've actually created the same model already, and I'll take a, uh, I'll do the full details and show you how I can first look at the report, understand my test accuracy, my training accuracy, the number of examples I use, the number of labels. This is also a command you can use through our API, and I can then make a prediction. Give it an example of beach, a pretty obvious beach, so it's about 99% uh, confident that that's a beach. So this is, again, a UI that you wouldn't engage with, but it's a great way to see this technology in action. What we'd hope to see is you guys leverage our API to integrate with um, either you know existing CRM application or extension of a CRM application uh, to leverage uh, the Predictive Vision service. So with that, I'm going to hand the reins back to Emily who's going to share with you guys some coding examples. Cool. So hopefully everyone can uh, can see my screen. If yep. I can get a quick confirmation. Awesome. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so here, I'm just, I, real quick, I wanted to kind of walk people through the, the API docs, as Michael mentioned earlier. Um, you know, the documentation is, is pretty good. Um, and uh, everything that you saw him demo through the UI is obviously, uh, you know, accomplished through uh, an API call. And so we'll be focusing on uh, today you know, creating a data set and what that looks like, uh, creating a label, uh, and then you know, also actually training uh, the data set. And then finally, you know, once you've trained the data set, uh, surfacing you know, an actual prediction. Um, and as you, uh, as you can see, if you go to the docs, um, you know, there's, there's uh, some quick start guides here for you know, Apex, um, the prerequisites are all uh, outlined here. This is how you get your credentials set up. Uh, you'll use a, a JWT token. All of the all the steps are here, and, and just for the sake of time, I'll, I'll save uh, walking through all of that. But um, like I said, you can uh, you can take a look at existing code examples in Apex. Uh, there's some Java examples uh, in our in our repos as well. But I thought I would uh, do something a little different um, and and show you how you would do this with Node.js. And Node is something that has been um, kind of a, a go-to tool in my tool belt for, for quite a while. So uh, just to walk you through kind of how you would actually interact with this as a developer, just hitting the APIs directly, I've, I've put together just a couple real quick demo scripts. So first, here's the client. Um, you know, I'll be using the request library. Um, and you know, the important parts here is obviously the, the API endpoints. This is like you know, the base URL um, and then your token. And again, this is a, this is a JWT. Token, uh, and we're gonna, you know, authorize ourselves with the token. I think an, another important thing is to, uh, you know, mind uh, cache control so you don't get to scale results. But uh, once you've got the the client set up, um, here's here's uh, for example how you would classify uh, some food, right? So this is using the the pre-trained classifier. This is something that's available to you without actually having to create, you know, a trading data set or anything like that. Um, and what I want to do here is just simply say, hey, I've got this image file here. Um, you know, how do you classify that? And so to do that, so we type node food identifier. And this is a raw output of what you're going to see from the API. So the thing that I think is probably most interesting to people is that you're not simply getting, you know, a binary classification. It's, it's first saying, hey, this is most likely possible in A's. Uh, there's probably some tomato sauce in there, maybe basil. Um, and this is the photo that I showed it, photo I hadn't ever seen before. And that's literally the, the first result uh, is literally exactly what I typed to get that image. Uh, and so, you know, if we wanted to train it, or not, sorry, not train it, but if we wanted to get a prediction from a different kind of food, let's, let's try that. And this is saying probably a chicken sandwich you know, maybe a pulled pork sandwich, and that, uh, not to get everyone hungry before lunch, but that's, again, literally what I, what I typed uh, to get this image. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, again, this is using the, the pre-trained classifier, but, you know, as Michael mentioned, I think the, kind of the, the most important aspect, you know, the most important use cases is when you can actually train custom data sets and, and you know, build a model on that. Uh, so let's, let's walk into that. Uh, so here's the code for 
creating a data set. And I'll, I'll run that real quick so you can see what it looks like. And again, this is just raw output from the API. Um, and so to look at the code, you know, here's what we've done. Where we've gone, hey, I'm going to create a model uh, for cars, right? And I'm going to give it three labels, Audi, BMW, and Tesla. And when you make the request, you're simply making a post request to the data sets endpoint, and you're handing it that form data. Oops. Handing it the form data. And then, uh, you know, all I'm doing here is just kind of outputting the JSON uh, parse nicely. And so you can see here, um, you know, it was successful. Here's the ID of, the, of the, the model, the name that you gave it, and then IDs for each of the labels that you've created. And this is an important aspect here. So, okay, we've, we've created the data set. Now what? Uh, well, uh, as, as Michael showed you, you you're going to train your data set. And so here I've got, in my cars folder, I've got, you know, about uh, 13 or so images of different cars. So here's an Audi, here's a BMW. Here's some Teslas. And I think the interesting thing to note here is, you know, the, these photos are of varying quality, uh, different angles, and it's that, that variety that's particularly useful to the algorithm. So, all right, so we've got the photos, we've got the, we've got the data set. How do we train it? Well, this is the code for that. Um, we'll walk through it here in a minute, but uh, let's go ahead and, and run that. And this is doing the exact same thing that this, this script did first, creating another data set. Um, but then after it creates a data set, it's going to start uploading all of the photos. So let's do that real quick. So you can see here it's uploading all of the images. Um, these are the, the server responses that we're getting saying, okay, we've got that worked. Here's the ID for that image. Here's the label ID. Uh, cool. So it worked. Awesome. Uh, and as you can see, here's the... Uh, this is the result of us saying, okay, I've, I've given you all the images I'm going to give you. Now go and, and train and, and build a model. Um, and so you can see here, this is the data set ID, uh, the same name that we used earlier. Uh, and the status here is queued, meaning that, um, you know, there were maybe a couple other training jobs ahead of it. But we can, uh, we can monitor the progress of that. And, oh, now it's running already. Cool. How do we do that? Uh, well, pretty simple. Um, right here, I'm importing the client again, um, so I don't have to, you know, enter my, my token again and all of that configuration stuff. Uh, and then all we're really doing is calling, we're just hitting a get request and we're saying, you know, hey, what's the status of, of the training on this model ID? Um, so let's, let's hit it again and see, maybe it's done. Nope, not done yet. Cool, that gives us time uh, to go and uh, actually take a look at how we actually, um, you know, uploaded everything and, and got it training. So, again, here we've created the data set here. Um, we gave it the cars label, uh, the cars and the labels, rather. And then, once that succeeded, we start listing all of the, you know, all of the files in our cars directory. Um, and uh, I did a little bit of a, kind of an async parallelism hack. If you're familiar with Node, you, you are familiar with some of the you know, kind of the, the challenges of asynchronous uh, programming, but you know, excuse my, my callback hell a little bit here, but um, what I've done is I've just, uh, in parallel, uploaded all of the images, and once it's done, then I, I call my train function, and all that does is, is literally hit the, the train endpoint, give it the data set, um, you give it a name for the data set, uh, which I believe is optional, um, and then make that post, and you get the response uh, saying, okay, that, you know, we've started training that. So let's let's take a look. Cool, it's it's done. Awesome. Uh, so uh, with that, I guess we can now test it and see, like, did that work? So um, as you may suspect, I've got a couple test images here, and the important thing to note is none of these images for either the BMW, the Audi, or the Tesla. You know, they're not they're not labeled, um, and they're not in the test. Uh, you know, data set. So these are images that, that our model has literally never seen before. We know that for certain. So that's one of the things that's kind of impressing to me. So we again take our model ID and we're just going to say no test cars. We're going to give it the model ID and let's start with car one. What does it think? Ah, BMW. Is that the case? Looks like it. I'm not a car expert or anything. Uh, let's try car number two. Audi. Yep, right again. 
And uh, this one's, yeah, you're probably going to guess, uh, yep, Tesla. So um, there you go. I mean, that's. I know that was a pretty, uh, pretty quick uh, walkthrough of uh, the various API endpoints. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely uh, feel free to ask. But um, that is how you build smarter apps with Einstein. So with that, I guess I'd like to uh, hand it back over uh, to the folks there at, at HQ. I, th I think we can uh, kick off the Q&A. Thank you so much, Emily. That was awesome. I love the uh, food examples. So we're going to handle uh, some questions. I might actually answer a question or two while I do this. But essentially, um, authentication with force.com right now, this is the developer edition. So anybody can use the free developer edition of force.com to sign up for the service right now. Heroku is on the roadmap coming soon uh, before we even make it generally uh, the service generally available for purchase. This pilot is going to be available for free uh, for both force.com and Heroku users. Uh, and this is a fully managed deep learning service. So um, we actually leverage our own storage. We, uh, we cover the costs of all the kind of hidden inputs you can imagine where you're uploading training data sets and you, you know, that you're paying for storage potentially if you're, if you're using a Salesforce site. We're going to obfuscate that all from the customer's point of view. And you're just going to pay on a prediction basis once we launch our GA. For the time being, it's going to be free. But when we make this generally available uh, for purchase, um, you'll actually just pay per prediction, and we'll have a free tier and then a series of uh, costs per prediction. Um, uh, or you can do, obviously, yearly commitments if that's what your business wants to do. So all this documentation uh, is shown on the documentation site, which I think we showed earlier, and I'll come back to it in a slide. But essentially, that's using curl and Apex, as well as other language wrappers uh, for Java, and I believe um, Node.js is coming, and some other ones as well. So. You know, we encourage you know, any of you guys, even if you have a use case right now or you're just thinking about it, is get familiar with the service. This is only for image recognition right now, but there'll be other uh, services in the future that are going to come out. We're going to have very similar integration processes. So if you get familiar with, with the image recognition service and start trialing it out, seeing if it's something your business can adopt, you can create your own training, uh, your own classifier. You can um, use one of our pre-trained classifiers if you just want to understand how the service works. Um, and, you know, I, I encourage everyone to experiment and, uh, and find something that, uh, that challenges them and, and move forward with it. So here's a couple more links for you. Uh, doc site, metamind.io is just our general website. You can go to that. You'll find the doc site. You'll find the forums. You'll find just kind of uh, general information about the service and, uh, and how you can log in. And then we have um, you know, direct links here to just the forum categories. Okay, so... With that, I think we have Sia. Oh, we've definitely got a handful we've of questions. Got, we've got questions rolling in, so yeah. uh, Emily or I can try to address these as they. Great. Thanks, Michael. And quick note, um, we'll go ahead and send out these links in a follow-up email after the, after the webinar, so the folks on the, on the uh, call can have access to those links. And with that, uh, let's go ahead and jump into some questions. Uh, the first question, I think it was already answered, but the uh, first question was, when will AI be available in Salesforce Developer Edition? I believe Michael answered that one. Uh, it is currently available in the Dev Editions. Great. Uh, second question, Michael, I think this one's for you. Uh, I'm going to try to reframe this question a little bit. Uh, we have a use case to identify license plates in images and blur them. Would this be a good fit for this capability? It's a, it's a great, uh, great question. Uh, you know, the ability, ability to identify a license plate, uh, we hear that come up a lot, and then you know, either the numbers on it are actually blurring them in this case. Uh, we don't create boundary boxes as an output, which is really, I think, what you're looking for, is identify the, where the license plate is, create a boundary box around that, and then you can actually then um, create your own script to blur what's ever inside that boundary box. That is a feature um, called segmentation. Uh, it's something that's on our roadmap. Uh, the more you ask us for it, the more I can demand it comes quicker. So I'd love to, you know, you can reach out on the developer forum and let me know uh, specifically how you're planning on implementing this, and uh, we can talk about timelines. Great, thanks. Second question, I think, of, of a similar vein: uh, Is there optical character? Uh, excuse me. Is there optical character recognition enhancements? And what license types does this come with? Does it come with AppCloud? So it's a standalone service. Um, to answer your, your latter questions here, which is, you know, does it come with AppCloud? Yes, in the sense that if you're an AppCloud user, you can uh, provision this service, but you don't, 
you're only restricted in the fact that we need uh, some user credentials. You don't actually have to purchase AppCloud. You could be just a uh, force.com developer license uh, and, then, and then use the predictive vision service. Uh, similarly with Heroku, uh, whatever uses you're using with Heroku, you could then provision the service. Uh, we don't have OCR uh, enhancements out of the box. Um, it is something you could actually train your own classifier to work on uh, if that's a predictive use case you're trying to do. Great. Uh, I believe this question was also answered in part. Uh, file storage in Salesforce can be pretty expensive. Do the images for the training models have to be stored within Salesforce or can third party, uh, third party storage services like S3 be used? Yeah, great question. Uh, as I, as I kind of hinted to you a few minutes ago, uh, we, we run this service as a, as a fully managed service, so uh, you don't have to worry about any of the storage costs. Um, you really just, the, the more value you get out of the service, uh, uh, that's really what we're hoping to get. So upload your images, train, train a classifier, upload more images, retrain. Um, we really want to uh, promote people adopting these services and, and trialing them out. Great. Uh see here. Uh, this, is, this is a question I think we see a lot. Uh, is the data set restricted only to images? Can we construct a data set and train the predictive service model to keywords, uh, or can we use this model to analyze text data that flows into Salesforce for making predictive actions? Yeah, great question. Um, this is a predictive vision service. It is created specifically for image recognition or object recognition. Uh, there are natural language processing tools we are going to make available. Uh, this is not one of them, though. It's a, uh, we'll make a, a language model, hopefully, um, coming in the future. We're going to make a sentiment model first, which is a, a, a single tool you could use to judge sentiment on text. Uh, but then the idea of training your own textual classifiers is something that uh, we understand opens up a lot of interesting use cases for CRM data. So no, not for this model, but um, potentially in the future. Great, thanks. Uh, this is a little, a little more on the technical side, more of the API implementation side. So, I'll, Emily, feel free to jump in if you think you can get this one. Otherwise, we can ask it to Michael. Uh, in the Mountain Beaches model, if we provide an image of a car to the API, will the result be something like none of the above, or would it still output, uh, excuse me, output the closest probable between probable I guess, match between the two? Yeah. So, Emily can handle it if she likes, or I can keep talking, take a drink of oh, water. No worries. Yeah, um, no, I go ahead and give your answer, and then I'll, I'll kind of talk about what I've experienced, because I, I do want to be, um, you know, transparent. I've only been working with the API for, for a little bit, so I'm still kind of onboarding with its behavior. But, yeah, feel free. Yeah. So, you know, the, the model is um, as powerful as the training data, as I like to say, is the more training data, the better, and um, how you sort your training data uh, is what the model predict on. So we made a mountains versus beaches classifier. It was a binary classifier, and the fact that, it was going to predict mountain or it was going to predict beaches. We could have made the same classifier and predict beaches and anything else or none, none of the above, which is essentially saying it's not a beach. Uh, and that's what it would predict. That's how we labeled our classes. Um, you know, they, uh, they're not going to predict a class that you don't give it. So I guess that's if you want to predict a none of the above or sort, uh, you need to create a negative uh, data set. Thanks. And just to follow up real quick, um, the behavior that I've seen from the API, just from like the developer's perspective, is if you've trained a model on a certain number of labels, uh, and then you give it an image that like doesn't represent any of the labels, the first result is usually just unknown, which is not like a label in your data set. And so that's how you can tell, you know, this image is most likely not actually what it's what it's giving subsequent results for. But it'll it'll say, you know, at the top, it'll say like. Uh, unknown, and it'll give you the probability, which is usually really high, and then it'll try to give you a couple, you know, other options with with very low probability. Cool. Thanks, Emily. Uh, I've got a really good question here, Michael. I, I think I'm gonna feel this one towards you. Uh, it's it's a wordy one, so I'll try to get through it and make sure. I, I, I apologize if I butcher it to the asker. Uh, so the question is: Predictive algorithms powered by machine learning can be very powerful but obviously their accuracy is completely dependent on the size of the training data sets they're first fed. I foresee many of Salesforce's SMB customers not having enough data up front to make some of these algorithms worthwhile. Are there any plans to have open sourced, anonymized data sets available to Salesforce customers? Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Uh, it's, it's a common problem we see. Uh, a lot of our customers tell us, uh, I, I have this great use case. I can imagine it's going to be the same use case that a lot of different SMBs might have, or even enterprise customers have it, and they just don't have the data available. 
Um, so that is the kind of the benefit of our pre-trained classifiers. We don't actually expose the data. We don't anonymize the data and, and, and provide it to the customer, but we actually train the classifiers. Um, there are public data sets available. So you can scour the web and try to uh, um, find publicly available data sets that you can download and then train on. Um, but they're all, the other option would be to leverage some of our pre-trained classifiers. So we had a lot of customers um, prior to acquisition that were interested in IoT, uh, and that was where the... Um, the food classifier originated from. So we said, instead of asking five customers to train their own food classifier, why don't we go find the 500 most popular foods, collect 1,000 images per class, and then deliver that as a, as a pre-trained classifier that anybody could leverage for rapid predictions. So uh, that's a great use case. Uh, we have, we've seen more, in the, especially in the social media industry, where people say, hey, I want to see you know, every Fortune 500 logo. And so we're working on kind of hearing what customers want, seeing if those are grouped together into uh, certain use cases. And if we find enough of them, we'll spend the effort to go train a classifier that you can leverage. Awesome. And another follow on uh, to that is uh, if you're looking for kind of publicly available image sets, you can check out image-net.org. Uh, and they've got about 14 million images. Um, so an image database kind of specifically targeted for, for this kind of uh, you know, research and use case. So I think we'll, we can add a link to that uh, in the doc. Great. Thanks, Emily. And actually, Emily, this one's for you. Um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm going to... Uh, well, I guess I do mean to put you on the spot, so I apologize. Uh, uh, no this is the, the two-part question. First part, what programming language is the code written in? And the, the second part is, can we get access to the code? No, sure. That's actually a really easy question. So uh, the code that I, uh, that I showed you today is JavaScript, uh, specifically JavaScript running in, uh, on the Node platform. Uh, so Node.js, I'm using uh, Node.js, I think, version 6, one of the latest version 6s. Uh, um, and yes, I will make the code available as soon as I possibly can. Um, look for it, uh, I think, in the, the kind of the, the document pack that we'll, that we'll send out uh, later. So I'll, I'll put it up on GitHub, and it'll, it'll be available. Great, thank you. Uh, I think we've already answered this one, but let's go ahead and field it. And Michael, correct me if I'm mistaken here. The question is, can this service be used to read standard documents such as financial statements or W2 files? It's my understanding that no, they, we cannot, uh, but there, that, that feature is on the roadmap for a later date. Did I get that right, Michael? Yeah, we, we don't have a specific date uh, on when we would do NLP technologies uh, for, for, for custom classification. But, uh, but yeah, that would, that would be in the, the language model uh, bucket. Cool. Uh, Michael, here's another one for you. Uh, the, the asker is asking if you can speak a little bit more about the use case surrounding compliance monitoring. Can you can you go into a little bit more detail on that? Yeah, this is a this is a use case. Uh, it kind of depends on what your definition of compliance is, but uh, we've seen people do it for whether it's safety and compliance. Is a, a lot of them are for uh, re either remote sites or sites where you have a lot of uh, labor. Maybe you're working on a construction site, and you want to take pictures of. Uh, you know, have a camera running and take a picture every two minutes and notify uh, a safety individual if someone's not wearing a hard hat. So you would train a classifier on hard hat exists or hard hat doesn't exist, and you know maybe you see someone walking by with a uh, with a baseball cap on and uh, trying to sneak by as a as a hard hat, and you would be able to notify a professional to to go talk to that person and, and get them a hard hat so they don't they don't injure themselves. Uh, there's a lot of use cases you can open up with that idea, but that's just one. That's awesome. <laughs> I never would have guessed that. That's great. Uh, this question is near and dear to my heart because I sometimes sit behind the Twitter handles here at Salesforce Developers. Uh, how is the Predictive Vision service being implemented into Social Studio? Great, great question. So it, this is a, a current pilot that's going on. So uh, talk to your your marketing cloud rep if you're interested in this. But it's a uh, it is leveraging uh, both our general image classifier, which is one of our pre-trained classifiers that has a thousand classes, and also um, you know, the ability in the future to actually train your own classifier to specifically make the unseen images in social media visible to your, to your social media rep. So if you can imagine, um, you're, you're really limited to user-defined uh, posts at this point. So if you're a um, consumer products company, uh, your social media reps only know if someone hashtags their, their product or if they search for a certain keyword maybe that's, that exists. Uh, but many times people are wearing your apparel or, or using your product and uh, saying good or negative things about it, and you'll never know about that if they don't actually directly uh, mention you. Uh, with this service, you could, uh, you could train a model to identify your product or identify maybe your, the industry you're in, 
we had a customer who was targeting the soccer market. So they wanted to identify anybody who had a soccer ball uh, in their uh, in their images, and then they were actually able to then uh, zero in on those and not have you know all the nonsense that comes if you were just to use the hashtag soccer or the hashtag uh, you know, football uh, if you're coming from Europe. And um, you know this service is being rolled out uh, as a pilot right now, but customers are are more than happy to uh, to be on board if they're interested. Cool, Michael. Another one here for you. Um... It's gonna be. It's gonna be. A, I'm sure it's gonna be a popular question. Uh, could you cover the costs associated with predictive vision service? I know we've mentioned it's a pilot. Uh, they're, they're asking. You know, we we are in our safe safe harbor here. If you mm -hmm. kind of give some indication of generally where it's gonna lie, I'm sure the, the listeners would be much appreciate uh, much appreciative. Yeah. So the the pricing and packaging is still being defined. So I'm not gonna give hard numbers yet because I don't want to disappoint you if it changes. But uh, we're really pushing for adoption. We want to create a community that leverages not just our predictive vision service, but all of our Einstein features in the developer community. Um, we, we consider ourselves to be one of the highly, most highly accurate uh, image recognition solutions on the market. And um, we want to not use that accuracy as a hindrance to adoption. So it'll be only based on how many predictions you make. There'll be a free tier, uh, let's say 1,000 predictions per month as a rough number. And then anything over 1,000 predictions, you'll buy in either buckets of 10,000, 250,000, 500,000, whatever we end up pricing these, these buckets at, and you'll be able to have a certain certain amount of predictions that you can make per month. Um, the, this will not be a, uh, you know, let's say you're making a million predictions per month, which is actually a use case we see a lot of customers say. You know, a million predictions per month really gets them into a point where no human can actually do this process, and it's a great way to institute the technology. Um, you're not going to be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, on, a, on a monthly basis. It's, it's, uh, it's a relatively um, cost savings. Cool, thanks. I love this question. Uh, we, you know, as, as we all know, Salesforce prides itself on being a development environment not only for hardcore back-end software engineers, but also for the more the front-end declarative click, click not code audience as well. Uh, so the question is, they're hoping to see how you might use the predictive vision service uh, or similar services using declarative development. Do we have any plans for that? So declarative being clicks, not code. Interesting. So similar to the UI I showed, um, when you're really running or building applications at scale, our API we find is pretty easy to use. Uh, the commands, the ability to add thousands of images, uh, the ability to do predictions from, um, uh, from you know, I guess in a, in a at scale from web applications, for instance, uh, it makes it probably more interesting if you do it through our API. Uh, but if you have direct uh, you know, use cases where you think a, a declarative uh, UI would be better for you, let us know. Uh, we can work on either helping you build an application that, that makes it declarative or uh, delivering that application ourselves. Awesome. <clears throat> Uh, and here's another another great question uh, from our ISV App Exchange side: uh, Are the is the predictive vision service available to ISVs to wrap into their managed packages? And can, and of course, can, can you speak a little bit to the, how the pricing might be handled in that use case? Yeah, so it it is available. I mean, it's through our API. You can call our API from any of your services. Uh, you don't need to uh, even build your application necessarily on Force. As I said, it's going to be available on Heroku uh, as an add-on. So um, you can. Uh, deliver this to customers as an ISV, and I kind of outlined pricing, but essentially it's just based on demand. Uh, the more predictions you make, the cheaper the service gets, uh, and uh, it's all customizable. Great, thanks. Uh, here's a question more on the integration or just lar larger force.com slash app cloud side. Uh, can we use images from the Salesforce attachments along with Apex to access this API? I'm not sure if I totally understand that one, but I'll, I'll, I'll hope that maybe you guys can interpret that better better than I do. Yeah, so we have some Apex code available on our site where you can do uh, predictions from from Apex using our um, pre-trained classifiers. Uh, we plan on on furthering or delivering, I guess, uh, more Apex code that people can use kind of out of the box. I think that answers your question. Um, but yes, you can access our API. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, another another great kind of medical industry question is the service HIPAA compliant. Uh, are the images saved in in our site or in your site? So we don't save um, the images you use for prediction. So in that sense, uh, we analyze the image, 
we provide you with our output, and then we don't, um, and then we don't save the image. So that, I think I think that covers a lot of HIPAA compliance. But I'm not a HIPAA compliant expert. Um, we can have a longer conversation about HIPAA compliance. We've worked uh, with uh, radiology companies in the past to actually diagnose uh, one was intracranial hemorrhaging. So it gives you a good idea of how accurate our models can be. Uh, that radiologists were using this as a first line of defense to, to prioritize which images they um, would look at first. Uh, thousands of images on a daily basis, um, you know, limiting or lowering their their response time for intracranial hemorrhaging, which is a a pretty um, you know every second matters kind of use case, uh, from 20 minutes to I believe six minutes uh, for someone to actually a human in the loop but still making a diagnosis. Awesome. So if I understood you correctly, uh, in terms of actual HIPAA compliance, they should probably reach out. Yeah, they should reach out, and we'll, we'll have a long conversation about how this, how we can uh, um, make sure we address your, your needs. Great. What's what's the best? Should should they email you? Should they find you on these developer forums? Uh, they can email me at uh, mmachado at salesforce.com. Um, Great. We, we we can get that into the follow-up. Or tweet me if you'd like. Cool. What's your what's your Twitter handle? Uh, Michael E. Machado at Twitter. Uh, you'll probably you'll probably have a better luck finding me on uh, the forum or email, <laughs> but I'll do my best to answer your tweets as well. Great. Well, and we'll make sure to send that info out in the follow-up emails. Oh, we've got so many great questions, you guys. I don't. I'm not sure that we're going to get to them all. I'm just kind of scrolling through, looking for stuff I think is going to cover the most uh, the most ground. Again, if you don't get your question answered today, please take it to the developer success uh, forums. It's developer.salesforce.com slash forum. Uh, ask your question there, and Michael's got a crack team of folks who can who can get on that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, here here's, a, here's a simple question. Uh, Emily, uh, this one's for you. Uh, do we need to know Node.js to interact with the predict uh, predictive vision service API? None whatsoever. Uh, Node is just you know what I'm most familiar with. Uh, it's what I've been working with primarily for the last five or six years. So, you know, I chose to use Node and JavaScript to build essentially just kind of the beginnings of, of uh, you know, kind of an API client uh, for the API. But at the end of the day, it's all, you know, just just HTTP endpoints and, and pretty basic ones. You're really just sending, uh, you know, either a couple of query string variables or some multi-part form data, uh, and and that's it. So you can really use anything you want that you know, that supports making um, standard HTTP calls. Awesome. Similar vein, um, this is a great question. Uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of paraphrase a little bit. Uh, I think the question is what uh, what algorithms are being used in the system uh, and can, can the users choose or switch between the algorithms used in the machine learning uh, deep slash deep learning algorithms? So this specific algorithm, it, um, is built for image recognition. Um, we will have, I guess, more specific if you're if you're trying to solve an, a specific NLP use case, uh, different algorithms available. But um, you know, the purpose of this service is to uh, simplify the process for people to train their own image classifiers. So there isn't really as much manual processes involved. Um, there is some fine tuning you can do. We can talk about how you uh, fine tune your models. Gotcha. If I if I understand you correctly, then when when you guys start working on the future iterations within uh, these a these predictive APIs. So, for example, NLP sentiment. Will those be distinct APIs, or will, will those be kind of flags on the ex existing API? So those will be uh, distinct APIs that you'll actually call, and they'll be all kind of in a similar format, but uh, but specific to the to the use case you're trying to solve. And then, as I said, you know, if you're trying to do something around segmentation or detection, uh, counting objects, for instance, is is a, is a is a more advanced use case. We'd have a separate API to do that. Great, great. Uh, so I apologize. I'm not super familiar with machine learning and deep learning, Michael. So I'm going to ask this question. I hope you can kind of parse it out better than better than I can. But the question is, uh, this is supervised learning. Can you do unsupervised learning within the app? Yeah, for image recognition in particular, um, we find that supervised learning is the best way to create a highly accurate model. Um, we'd rather spend more time working with customers on how to collect the best data. Uh, and either using a third party or, or using professional services to help you find the right data to solve your problem. Uh, we're afraid if you used unsupervised data or unsupervised learning, um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't find as much value from it. Great. 
Uh, and again, I think this one might be a little bit more, a little bit deeper than I fully understand the service. But the question is, do you have any image forecasting models? I'm not sure if I understand what image forecasting models are, unless you're, <laughs> unless you're talking about weather forecasting, which uh, we don't have any out-of-the-box weather forecasting models. If it's, if it's something different, um, maybe send us another quick question in the next two minutes or so. Great, yeah. So we, our, our team will keep an eye out for a follow-up on that, and we'll try to get back to them if we have time. Um, I think this, this is a similar kind of open-ended question, so I apologize for throwing this at you, Michael, but see what we can do with it. Uh, the question is, how can we select or fine-tune the feature set? Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to look for the question to see if I, there's anything else in there. If you uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's pretty bare bones. So I guess I, I think the spirit of the question is, you know, actually I'm not, I'm not totally certain on the spirit of that question either. So, so ask her if you're still online. If you go ahead and just kind of provide some additional clarification on that, we'll see if we can get to that one. Uh, how about this? So the question is, uh, how can the predictive model be used in Service Cloud? Can you quote any sample use cases? Yeah, so self-service and field service are the biggest ones that come up for us. So the ability for a customer to either take a picture and not have to manually input what the product is, or actually be able to take a picture um, for, for issues with your, your product that are, are more visibly evident, you could actually try to do diagnosis, uh, automated diagnosis. So um, preferably be able to have you know, the top five use cases where your product breaks, image is taken, uh, you can actually then just, just suggest a KB article that addresses that need. Uh, and your customer gets served in a you know in a very fast and efficient way. Awesome, thanks. Uh, more more specific use case questions coming along. Uh, is there anything you can speak to with regards to real estate or even mortgage loan industry for the deep learning API? Mm -hmm. uh, we had a you know real estate's an interesting one. We had a customer who was doing uh, want to know every time a house gets sold uh, if they could take a picture of the house um, and understand what type of roof it has and they would sell solar panels. A lot of times new buyers want to do uh, improvements on a home. Solar is, is a great way to uh, lower your, your energy bill. And so they could essentially um, take a flyer, uh, have every flyer in San Francisco, because I live in San Francisco, uh, be scanned for a flat or a pitched roof. If it has a pitched roof, uh, it would be identified and, and they would do a sale that way. So you, that's just one use case for real estate. Um, but you could, you could do the same thing to classify all the listings in your city for the type of home and create a classifier for type of home, Victorian versus modern versus ranch, or something like that. Awesome. That's that's a really awesome lead gen use case mm -hmm. for, for real estate. That's cool. Uh, let's see here. The, the questions are starting to slow down. And I think we've answered a lot of these. Again, folks, if you have any questions that you asked and you haven't gotten to today, please take them to the developer forums. Uh, there's, there's, there's a handful that we've already answered a few times. We're, we're unfortunately just not going to get into them. Uh, da -da -da -da. I think this is this is similar to one we we saw earlier, but I, I think it's word slightly different. I'm, I'm curious if there's anything else we can say about it. Uh, can you publish a data set? So, for example, if they've trained a data set to recognize Audi versus BMW, uh, they'd like to share that with the community. Are we are we looking at doing something like that? I think I, I love the idea. You know, the the ability for um, users across organizations to uh, to leverage the community. Uh, to share data is, is not a current feature in our on our service, but I'd I'd love to be able to enable that. Um, you know, use the power of the developer community to um, to help each other train models and 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 gather data in a in a kind of a community format or crowdsourcing format. Um, uh, so no, it's not currently available. Um, but you know, the more data we get, or if you if you want, you can actually let us know that this is a, a data set you'd be willing to. Uh, uh, to share with multiple users, we could, could potentially create a, a pre-trained classifier that everyone could leverage off that data set. I'm, I'm going to riff on that one just a little bit. This is just satisfying my own curiosity. Uh, I, I could imagine people, especially like ISVs and SIs, spending a lot of time training models they know that will be useful to many, many customers. Uh, is there any plans to allow an app exchange partner, for example, to kind of license out their model? Um, not in the current roadmap, but again, this is a this is a brand new service. So the more uh, you want to reach out to me and, and try to guide us on on where you see a, a great opportunity for us to to help you and help your customers, uh, we're more than happy to consider at this point. Great. And I saw one question. I'll just try to answer it because I think it's an interesting one, which is it goes into our pricing model and it goes into our capabilities, which is hey, can I first take a picture of an Audi and then understand if that Audi is in a uh, um, is on on a beach or on a or on a mountain? 
uh, it's essentially just two classifiers you're creating. So we would, um, you know, once we actually GA the product, you would be charged for two predictions and rather than just one. But you'd create it. You're, you're sending every image um, uh, to a single classifier. You could essentially just point that image to a second classifier and be able to derive more information from that. Great. And we are about running out of time. I think I, I think we have time for one more question, and we'll wrap it up. Uh, the question is: Do we have any benchmark results that compare the MetaMind API uh, with Google Vision API or the IBM Visual Recognition API? Yeah. So uh, you can you can Google how. Uh, how we've done, uh, Wolfram is one of the people who have, who's published some articles about. Uh, you'll, you'll probably have to look up MetaMind rather than Salesforce because uh, this was all pre-acquisition about how we performed, but we've actually improved our, our API service since, since we've been acquired. Um, the really, the, the biggest differentiator between those services and ours is um, that's, you know, when they do comparisons, they're doing it across our, our general object identifier, which has, you know, a limited but, but pretty vast amount of classes. Uh, the real value you get with our service that you don't get with those other services is the ability to train your own classifier. Um, training and tuning a model is how you tackle the hardest use cases, in my opinion. Um, we can't provide a classifier that does everything. We're going to provide classifiers that pre-train classifiers for, we see the most common use cases, uh, but your specific product, you know, how, you, how, how your product tends to break and service cloud has to address that, uh, that's something that you'll never see a model uh, be able to tackle uh, unless you train it yourself, and that's really where you get the most value. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michael. Emily, thank you so much for, for participating in the webinar. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, thanks to everybody who joined us today. There's some really great questions, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, if we didn't get to your questions again, please check out the developer forums uh, and ask them there. We have, uh, we have experts monitoring those forums who are happy to answer your questions. Again, we'll be, we'll be, this webinar was recorded. We'll be sending it out to everyone who joined. Uh, and we'll also be sending some follow-up uh, information with links that, that Michael and Emily uh, referenced earlier. Uh, one last note, we will be sending out a survey. We would love to hear your thoughts on how we did. This will help us improve our, our webinars in the future. Uh, please make sure to check out this URL, uh, bit.ly slash predict divisions, capital P, capital V. And let's look at one more note from Michael. Yeah, great. And if, if anyone can sign up in the next uh, two days, we will be sending out a, a, a survey about, about the experience you have during the sign-up process and, uh, and what you're trying to do and accomplish. So it's another great way to, to provide additional feedback to us. Once you've trialed the service, you've gone through some of the uh, documentation uh, and can, can tell us more about what you're trying to accomplish. Great. Tons of awesome follow-up activities. Yep. Hey, thank you, everyone who joined. That's it. We will see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.